side of the room. I thought that less people would turn around <laughs> and see me doing it. I thought you'd just sort of think to yourselves, let's just let it happen. And then I would come and you'd be like, whoa! But I think instead, you're all just like, oh, he's there. <laughs> Which, it's not the vibe I was going for. Um, look, Frank, thank you for coming. Um, I know this doesn't sound uh, cool, but the, the, I wasn't expecting this many people. Uh, <laughs> like, I, I, the good thing to do as a performer for the room drop trusting you would be to go like, whoa, sold out again, this is getting boring. <laughs> <laughs> in my career. <laughs> Full room, whoa. Um, so, so thank you very much. Um, I, I, yesterday, I, I, there's like a green room in the venue to relax before the gig. That green room is on the third floor. I was not told that. I went uh, to the room on the second floor, which is an office for an IT company. <laughs> um, that's where I was chilling out before the gig. I, I was going to the room, and there were two people working there, who I assumed were part of this operation. Um, so I went in and went, you guys don't mind if I just chumped it to myself in the corner, do you? And they were like, um, yeah. And I thought, fuck, these guys are rude. So I was like, um, you don't seem happy about this. And they're like, um, well, who are you? I'm Ian Smith. Um, I'm doing the gig downstairs, and they're just like, oh, right, well, yeah, you shouldn't be here. <laughs> uh, that's what happened yesterday. Uh, new development today, on their door, there is a sign that says, the green room is on the third floor. <laughs> and then the other thing is that it says, please do not disturb the nice people in this office. <laughs> I think if you were truly nice people, you wouldn't have had to put up that fucking sign. <laughs> bullshit from these tickets. <laughs> Don't know if you're still in! <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you very much for coming. Um, right, the show hasn't started yet, but just as a way of sur like a survey, who... Because I don't know how I've amassed a full room. So, I mean, I'm aware that, like, so, give, give me a cheer if you've come here. Um, imagine, imagine that was my opening question. <laughs> give me a cheer if you've come here. So, and uh, you don't know me, you're not with someone who knows me, and you're not like a member of the comedy industry who's been invited. Well, <laughs> can't be one guy. <laughs> like, I'm looking at the front door, there's at least some people I don't know. And it, what? You're, in the, you're the only person who doesn't know me. Me? Yeah. Well, no, I, I, I sort of know you. Oh, fuck! <laughs> Take that. It makes me look nice, but everyone's gonna go, oh, what a nice guy. I 
I'm obviously going to pay full price. That has been absolutely butchered, that two for one. I've gone for that. Um, I'm, I'm excited though, I'm excited about the show. And so, I did it in Edinburgh. Full, full month run, only one walkout. <laughs> one walkout in a month, that was great. And it was a very complimentary walkout as well. What happened there, there was a woman, she was feeling quite faint, she was feeling quite sick, she had to leave, she thought she was going to collapse. Fair enough, I'm not going to keep her in the gig. Now she'd be looking at her like, no, you stick it out, that's a fraud! <laughs> but crucially, she'd come in with her husband, and he did not leave with her. <laughs> <laughs> he saw his wife barely able to stand up and walk out of the venue like that, and he was like, yeah, but I want to see how it ends. <laughs> Excited. Um, I've, got, I've got a tech, I've got a new, I had a tech in Edinburgh, he was absolutely brilliant. Um, I've got a tech today, no disrespect to her, I don't trust her. She, when we come to the venue, she pointed at that and went, whoa, what's that? To the screen. <laughs> the screen. That's, that's, what, that's where the show's happening. <laughs> and, uh, come on, I'm just looking at these for about 30 seconds, just going, <laughs> so I don't have high hopes. So no disrespect to her. Um, she, she said she's scared of heights. I don't know if anyone's seen her. She's stuck to the ceiling, the tech box. I think we'll be alright though. Um, I'll start off, I'll tell you a fact. Uh, shout out if you know what they call aubergines in America. Eggplant. Eggplant. Well done. Oh, what did you go for? <laughs> you're a very weird clown. <laughs> And my first thought was, they seem fucking morons, they're trying to say chickens. <laughs> <laughs> Call a cow and beef tree, what's wrong with you? Yeah. 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 First gig of the run in Edinburgh, um, asked that question and a man went, uh, Birchills! <laughs> Birchills! <laughs> That's what he went. That was the first three minutes of that gig that gave us trying to work out where he'd heard the word Birchills. <laughs> this is what we found out. He did not know the answer, but he still wanted to participate. <laughs> and he knew it couldn't be a word that he knows, because he knows what those words mean. So what he did is he had a go at a word. <laughs> and just sort of went, oh, come on, Birchills! Sounds right! <laughs> so the, show, um, the show's about indecisiveness this year. Or is it? But I'm fine. Here we go. <laughs> that, that, that's the bit that marks the show starting. Um, or was it? You can do it twice. <laughs> that's what I like about that joke. It's reusable. Um, or is it? Free. <laughs> Imagine if this was the gig. <laughs> that joke over and over again. Um, I, don't, I don't think we'd be happy. Um, or would we? <laughs> you get what you pay for, £2. <laughs> £2. is 16. I reckon we can beat it. Um, I'm getting this sense in the room you're all like, we do not want you to try. Um, that's the vibe I'm getting. Um, what am I? You're doing it. Seven. Seven. I'll stop when you stop laughing. Um, oh, what am I? Um, we, we, we should move on. Um, seen this and uh, there's a quote that says the whole problem of the world is that fools and fanatics are always so certain of themselves and wise are people so full of doubt my favorite thing about this quote is that historians cannot decide who said it <laughs> they don't know whether it was bertrand russell wb gibbs or charles bukowski and no one is going to want to put their foot down in that debate <laughs> no one's going to be going 100 percent charles bukowski 100 percent is it paul let me refer you back to the <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but the show also contains some origami. Ooh. Yeah, I, I, I am stressing some because I think it's been oversold in Edinburgh how much origami is in the show. <laughs> because the British Origami Society started following me on Twitter. <laughs> Not just that, but they were actively retweeting and advertising. <laughs> Yesterday, yesterday we had one in. This is two times it's happened.
happened. Yesterday, there's someone from the British Origami Society in Edinburgh, there's one gig, three of them in. But they didn't come in with each other. Three, had three hands went up in the gig, and then they were all like, Oh, Paul, you're a kid. Do love origami. I mean, I'm not great at origami. This is my kind of level of origami. I do swans. Um, not just swans, to be fair to me. I do a swan, a duck, a <laughs> mallard, <laughs> big neck pigeon, <laughs> giraffe sitting down, <laughs> and a football. So, I'm, 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 I'm all right. I, I think origami is second only in the craft world to magic eye puzzles. Do you know magic eye puzzles? Magic eye puzzles are an image, and if you look in the background of that image for long enough, you're supposed to see another image <laughs> in the background of that image. These things blow my fucking mind. I absolutely love them, but I'm so frustrated. Because every time I look in a magic eye puzzle, I get absolutely fucking <laughs> uh, It's supposed to be swans. Who's got swans? Uh, I guess if you saw anything else, sometimes if you've got something going through your mind, that can get into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If we don't have any origami experts in, you might not be aware of the folklore of the Senbazuru. Has anyone heard of that? I'll tell you. <laughs> Senbazuru promises that anyone who falls a thousand origami cranes will be granted a wish by the gods. Must be made within one year, made by the person who's going to make the wish at the end. <laughs> what do you think's in these boxes? <laughs> a fuck ton of cranes! I've done 999, I'm going to make the thousand cranes in this gig, we're going to have a live wish granting! <laughs> yeah, I bet that seemed forced, if I'm honest. <laughs> a live wish granting! <laughs> Don't tell me you've all already seen a live wish granting today. <laughs> the only comedian who's doing wish grantings in a minute. How do we get into origami? Did I hear someone ask that? <laughs> I think so. I'll tell you. Um, so I, I live in London. Um, I live in a place called Denmark Hill. I like it in Denmark Hill. I like the train station. I like the layout. It, it's got platform one, a bridge, two and three next to each other, a bridge, platform four. I like that because I get to see my favourite thing. So everyone gets pissed off when there's a change of platform announcement, but they still do it when it goes from two to three. <laughs> so you get to see people go, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I've overreacted. <laughs> but but Denmark Hill Station is made by a man who works there. Levels of stress on this man off the charts. But he used to work on the ticket gate and he would say good morning to everyone who come into the station, but not in a happy way. He's furious because it's 8 a.m. rush hour and he thinks that's his job. <laughs> People streaking in in the morning, he's just going, good morning, 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 good morning. slow down a bit, please, good morning, good morning. If he loses someone, he's got to run down the station like, morning, I got you. Right. <laughs> Best time to see him do this is 11.59 for the switchover. <laughs> morning, good morning, good morning, good, good afternoon, good afternoon. <laughs> They clearly thought, they, they changed his job because they thought, we can't have this mad round people screaming in the face too much. They've given him a new role. He now works on the tannoy. That man with that level of stress is on the announcements at Denmark Hill train station. This is the first noise you hear when he does an announcement. Um! <laughs> already you're thinking, I don't think this is going to be a positive announcement. <laughs> There's no, if he wants to make a change of platform announcement, he's so busy apologising for the fact the platform's changed, you do not find out where it's changed to. <laughs> this is what he waits, he's still going, um, right, listen up. <laughs> Everyone on platform one, you're not going to like this. <laughs> the train's coming, but it's not coming where you think it's coming. It's coming on a different platform. Get running to the bridge. Start moving right now. If you get the next train on platform one, you're going to Clapham. You do not want to go to Clapham. Obviously, there'll be some people on platform one thinking, I do want to go to Clapham. That's the next train on platform one. There are no problems with the Clapham train. But if you want to go to London, Victoria, right, it's just left platform three. I'm so sorry. <laughs> in, in Ghoul, 
little, uh, little northern town called Goom. It's quite a weird place. I'll give a few examples of how weird it is. Uh, I recently asked my mum if she remembered when a man was caught wanking off his horse and it made the front page of the newspaper. And her response to that question was, oh, which one do you mean? <laughs> a couple of horse wankings. <laughs> This is a while ago, it's got a bit gentrified now. <laughs> Someone's put a prep where that guy used to wank his horse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A good example, like a small northern town. You might get this if you're from a small town, but when we were watching like the local news, if when the weather come up, if Ghoul was written on the weather map, I would lose my fucking mind at that side. <laughs> Screaming my mum and dad into the rooms like, Mum, Dad! We're on the map! Right, my dad running down the stairs like that, sliding in on his knee, just punching the air. This is a Falklands veteran, I've never seen him this happy. <laughs> my mum pointing at the screen with a mixture of happiness and anger, just like, Yes! Fuck you, Doncaster! <laughs> We've got weather as well. What's it gonna be? Cloudy! <laughs> The best thing I've ever seen in Ghoul, I saw a man on a mobility scooter get egged and... <laughs> yeah, like, that's enough for some people. <laughs> I'd be happy if you ended there, mate. Um, a man on a mobility scooter, egged, then gets up off his mobility scooter, runs after the man, <laughs> punches that man to the floor. That's what I like to see, just a bit of benefit fraud, like. <laughs> Denmark Hill's a good, classier uh, area. It's getting even better as well. There's a new new bit of green space. So there's some new flats being built and a little park coming. I know it's going to look nice because the building site commissioned one of those artist impressions of the finished thing. You know what? A building site can't trust you to know what happiness on some grass looks like. <laughs> so they just get stock images like that and you're like, oh yeah, it's going to be sweet. And I, I had one done for the kids, this is what I was open. <laughs> <laughs> Big old standing up, um, that's what I call standing ovation, standing up. Um, one, one man not moving for anyone. <laughs> about five walkouts by the look of it. I think, I think it's doable. <laughs> I knew that this, this artist's impression was, a, was the, the worst one I've ever seen. And I, I knew that immediately because what I noticed was you know, on stock image websites, they have like a watermark over the image so you can't use that without paying for it. This company have gotten away with that by using them anyway. <laughs> every single person in the park has got get images written across their chest. Every bar none, every single one. You kind of get away with it on the chest because it makes it look like they're all just big fans of get images. <laughs> or going around with a merch on. There's two people in the park. They make no sense. I hope that they're in real life because I think they're fun. But you, the weird thing, so what they've got, first one, Man waving, stock image, smiling man waving. That's normal enough, but where have they placed it? On a children's roundabout. <laughs> Grown man waving on a child. Just for a kid like that. That's all. The only way that could make sense. So it, this guy, he's coming to the park, he knows everyone there. <laughs> and he's small. <laughs> It's going to tell me a fucking age to wear that here. Oh, right. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> One man in the park, much more tragic character. Definitely doesn't have as many friends as this guy. They've got a man playing frisbee and they have neglected to put a companion in. <laughs> a solo frisbee. Now, that's just littering now. That's just chucking something that isn't biodegradable. It was put a frisbee in. It makes sense, that's all you... Now, he's the saddest man in the world. There's no lonelier walk than the walk to go and pick up your lonely friend. <laughs> you need to get companionship in your life. I, I, I want to get a dog. That's my big plan. I'm going to get a dog. Woo, woo. And if I book for a dog? Woo, woo. Yeah. What, um... What made you do that? <laughs> I also really want a dog. You also really want a dog? Yeah, we're connected on a lot of levels. <laughs> what, um, what would you say your favourite sort of dishes, like food-wise? Uh, my mum's curry. Oh, right, no, 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 that's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we would never connect her. That'd be, uh, that'd be weird, but I was like, yeah, your mum's curry is mine. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I've got something to tell you. I mean, you said that. <laughs> What's 
she doing with this curry? She's not just slapping a thing on your plate and saying curry. <laughs> yeah, she must be. What? What are we talking about? Karma? Uh, it's like a chickpea curry with chicken in it. Chickpeas? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no disrespect, but I don't like the sound of your mum at all. <laughs> Where she's like, oh, it's a chickpea, like, no, and chicken. You're like, yeah. The way around, you'd be like, fuck you. <laughs> no disrespect to her. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what your plans. Um, what would you call a dog if you if you get a dog? Uh, uh I don't know. Not fair enough. <laughs> I don't think you want a dog as much as you're banging on about it. <laughs> Giving it the big one with a big old whoop. You don't even know what you call a dog. If I get a dog. I'm calling it, I wish I had a dog. Because then if it goes off, I get to go, I wish I had a dog! I wish I had a dog! And when it turns up, everyone will go, <laughs> What's that guy capable of? He's got that power, he's just wishing for dogs, what a waste! <laughs> spend, uh, spend a lot of time though, just in the house by, by myself. But I've got this in the post, I've got my TV license, a letter in the post, come with this supplement. Turn your TV license into a swan. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, and I'll be honest with you. Um, it comes with instructions on how to turn your TV license into an origami swan. Um, now, the thought process behind this is that they want you to go paperless, to, to go onto online TV licenses so you don't waste paper. Um, I think if they want you to not waste paper and go paperless, getting thousands of people into origami. <laughs> Since I get the reminder in the post, turn that into a swan. Third reminder, swan, fourth, swan, court summons, swan. <laughs> my accountant asked me if I'd kept all my receipts for the tax year. I was like, you're going to have to unfold a flock of them there. <laughs> Obsessive origami. I love all different things of, of Japanese culture. I'm a big fan of haikus at the minute. Do you have anyone in from the British Haiku Society? <laughs> no, we didn't invite them, fair enough. Fair enough. If, if you don't know what a haiku is, I'll explain it to you via a haiku. So it's all about the syllables. So the first line is five, second line has seven, third has five two. I'll give you a few examples. Soap dispenser works, but the fucking tap does not. <laughs> I hate virgin trade. <laughs> <laughs> Joe was written before it was uh, nationalised to LNER, and that doesn't work, so I just kept it. Um, another one, um, Tom prints are unique, but I suppose they don't come up in many crimes. <laughs> Which is a little fact for you, your tongue print is as unique as your fingerprint, but people don't know that, because no one's ever got their house robbed and someone goes, don't worry, we're going to catch this scumbag. He's like, his tongue print all your door handle. <laughs> Big fan of haiku. Haiku's not the best poem in the world, though. What's the best type of poem? Limerick. Yes! <laughs> I fucking love a limerick. If, if you don't know what a limerick is, I'll explain it to you via a limerick. So, a limerick is always five lines long and said a little bit like a song. When it comes to the lines, the first two pairs rhyme and the fifth line is supposed to rhyme with the line at the beginning. <laughs> there are, there are limericks. That's why I like them. I've got a lot of respect for a limerick. <laughs> oh, difficult. Are you hearing do some research into origami. I wanted to teach you as much as I could about origami, so I went on Wikipedia. This is the first line on Wikipedia about origami. This is going to actually blow your mind. Origami followed on from the invention of paper. <laughs> <laughs> followed on from. And when I read that, I was, I was like a cartoon character. I was like, what? <laughs> I thought it was the other way around. There's loads of frustrated origamis just staring at a table like, I know what I want to do. <laughs> so looking around at all the trees like I know it's something to do with you. Yeah. <laughs> it's incredible what you can make from a single sheet of, of paper. All of these things, just one sheet of paper. All of these things, one sheet of paper. This is well beyond my level, just one sheet of paper. It's incredible what you can make. <laughs> For long enough, it's one sheet of paper. Big neck pigeon, giraffe sitting down, and a football. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let's do a raisin and chip 
go do the good stuff. Goof it up before you move. She died. Thank you. <laughs> you. You might not understand how infuriating it is, but I'm going to do it to you. I'm going to ruin the show now. Now you all know I do a star jump. <laughs> ruined it. I'm doing a star jump. What's going to be a surprise? Not anymore. <laughs> you ever put the audio description on by mistake? Good. I've listened to an episode of Lost with the audio description for the blind <laughs> jump. Neither of us are blind. And she's just like, well, it's fine. <laughs> it's not fine. We're not blind. <laughs> Don't even see this one. Yeah, but you get maybe you are blind. See, we're not blind. Um, well, I've never said that before. Don't think I'll say it again. Um, <laughs> so annoying. An audio description. Because. I know that they're good inventions, but there's nothing more infuriating than watching something and then have someone say what you've just seen <laughs> back to you in a monotonous voice. <laughs> no one puts any energy into audio descriptions. It's always just stuff like, he picks up the knife from the table. And mate, just picking up a fucking knife from the table. <laughs> Were you going to deliver it like that? If I was doing audio descriptions, I'd be, I'd be giving it so much energy. I'd be like, oh shit! <laughs> No, don't do it! <laughs> Bastard! Stop! Stop! She's trying to get your head off! What did I? Oh, you'd be glad you're blind, you don't have to see this shit! <laughs> Ian has a drink of water and that was it. <laughs> the audience rise to their feet, giving Ian his fifth standing ovation of the show. Oh, thank you! Oh, thank you! <laughs> thank you. An audience member holds out their hand towards Ian. Ian shakes the audience member's hand. It is clear from their face, this is the happiest they've ever been. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And, um, it's important to... Oh, I should have flagged this up at the top. Right, so, in the show, in Edinburgh, there were two videos. Two videos in the show where I talk about the importance of getting outside. And then I would leave the venue and there would be a video synced up to make it look like I was still talking outside the venue. Very, very nice. Very impressive, if I do say so myself. <laughs> but I, we do not have them because I thought I could refilm the one outside the venue here, but the second one is not refilmable. Refill and that one takes place in broad daylight. It is now dark outside. <laughs> Basically, what we're going to do, so that you can still experience the show, is I'm going to play the videos anyway, um, but also because it's quite convoluted to get outside the venue, I'm just going to go <laughs> into the toilet. <laughs> and then for the other one, I'll go into that one. And I think we've all just got to agree to imagine what it would have been like. <laughs> um, you know, narratively it'll make sense, but you've really got to stop yourself from thinking, why is the time of day changed? Why is his hair a different length? Why, um, why does this not feel good? Um, <laughs> if you can control those thoughts, you'll get the most out of the kid. Right? <laughs> it's really a two-way sort of system going in. Anyway, so um, forget about that. But um, I think it's important to get outside as well. <laughs> but, um, you know, get, get a hobby, get outside the house. They're, they're good for indecision. Otherwise, you're doing the same thing. You're staying inside, you're dwelling on things. Um, I, I went to see War of the Worlds, a musical. Did anyone see that? No, I didn't expect that from this crowd. Um, you all know me. No one's in the British Army Guard Society. The only audience interaction we've had has been chickpeas and raisins. It's been absolutely fucking car crash. <laughs> well, War of the Worlds is a weird, it's a weird musical. So, like, I mean, if you know what War of the Worlds, aliens are invading. I would say 90% of the town get killed. 90% vaporised by aliens. Then at the end of the musical, they have a projection of how the town celebrated defeating the aliens. This is the image they show. 90% of the town died, celebrate with a full brass march of men. 90% have gone. I was no one from the marching band. <laughs> is to shout women and children first into the shelters, let a lot of their own personal preferences affect their job. <laughs> it's just there, like, right, women and ch- 
Actually, no, fuck it. This is my time. Brass musicians! <laughs> Get them in here! Like, drag it, anything! Get in here! If we beat these big metal fuckers, we're gonna wanna celebrate this shit! How are we gonna celebrate it? With a fucking brass band! Uh, any, anything street party? Who's got bunting? Yes, get it in, Gillian, get it in there. Uh, trestle tables, if you've got a trestle, you're coming in. Get them in. Uh, they're going to take up a bit of room, so no children. Women, all the kids, your small targets for the laser beams. Zigzag, zigzag, go, go, go. Um, who does good party food? Follow on, super. Yes, get in here. Julie, um, do you do gluten free options? Where well, you can get to the fucking back of the Julie? It is a real disease. It is a real disease. It is a real disease. You need to get some xanthan gum and move with the times. <laughs> what are we? Xanthan gum? Xanthan? Have you said fucking heard of it? X A N. I don't know why it's but uh, Let me come back. Why is it being played? Try enough. Good try. Get fucked. <laughs> what would you play with? You? Rain stick. Get in. Get two rain sticks. Yes. Right. Yeah. All of it. What was I always say? You can never have too many. Tubers, get in there! <laughs> um, so xanthan gum, it replaces the elasticity and it's lost when gluten's taken out of the baking process, okay? Um, no, you can't, no! Tell it to the fucking tripods, Julie! Paul, <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, you're a mate of mine, but you're not coming in, you're full of coal. Give it, <laughs> give it to the fucking aliens, mate. Yeah, good luck. Um, where, where, where's Samantha? Where's my ex? Oh! <laughs> so really, it's a fun routine to do if you've got other stuff on your mind. Channel it into one of the worlds. But, it's good to get outside. Um, um, uh, you know what I mean. So, um, I love the outdoors! Um, but I, I'll, um, I feel like a hypocrite if I'm doing it inside. So I'll do a bit outside there. Uh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Went on a cool trip recently. Went to New Zealand. It's a long old flight. I feel that's the only time I don't mind watching a film I've already seen before when I'm on a long flight. Because that's one of my biggest fears. Nudity on a plane. I mean like on the screen. But I think in general really, if the pilot comes out, he's got his dick out, I'm not very happy about that. Oh, and it has been pointed out to me. I am aware that women can be pilots. I just think the phrase pilot with his dick out rolls off the tongue more than pilot with a vagina out. That's it. If you're sat on a plane, it's the two complete strangers you've never met before. Shot. And um, sorry, just for a second. So you're sat next to these two strangers, what are you doing? I'm doing a bit, I'm trying to. <laughs> you're sat next to this stranger, all of a sudden on your screen. People start fucking, of course he's gonna see it. His peripheral vision's gonna pick it up. That's what your peripheral vision's for. There's fucking dicks coming at you from the side. <laughs> I didn't like these guys anyway, because when I went to go to the toilet, I was like, can I go to the toilet? Yes, and then they didn't move. So to go to the toilet, I had to all of a sudden start doing this, that's the toilet right out to catch this hassle thing, crunching his face up, getting my knees all over this guy, fucking morons. Excuse me? The people on the plane, not you! <laughs> First thing I did when I get to New Zealand, you know, what's that? Frisbee, mate, for fuck's sake. First thing I did is I go on a harbour cruise. Usher entry level two! Usher! Usher entry level tourist thing, go on a harbour cruise, learn about the place. Thought it'd be a little bit boring, but it wasn't. <laughs> Stripe in there. <laughs> so trying to keep. Well, why am I trying to keep that bit of continuity? <laughs> You're all going to go. Oh yeah, man, that's what that toilet's like. <laughs> yeah, we're on a harbour. I thought a harbour cruise would be boring, but five minutes into this harbour cruise, there was an announcement. It just said uh, we're going to have to make a diversion because there's been reports that two ships have collided, and we need to help the rescue attempt. <laughs> Wow! Best fucking armor cruise ever! Rescue mission cruise! That ramps the stakes up a bit. 
I knew it was going to be fun because the guy doing the tourist announcements didn't stop doing tourist facts while we're on our way to a rescue mission. <laughs> Still on the tannoy, just going, I don't know you look out to your left hand side, it's Rangatoto Island. That's the newest volcano in the Auckland region, but still about 800 years since it last erupted, so no danger of that going off anytime soon. Now, over to your right hand side. It's not looking good for these people. <laughs> it's really just going to be a case of maybe prioritising the weakest one. We at once just gone under there, so I think we're going to get into the double figures of lives lost. <laughs> but the name Rangatoto. <laughs> good fun in, in New Zealand. Very exciting. I went to a glowworm cave. Has anyone been to a glowworm cave before? Nah, fuck it, you've been to a fucking raisin cave. There's, <laughs> I mean, that makes absolutely no sense at all. <laughs> what, um, raisins are grapes? What's a prune? Plum. Did I ask you? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, any, any others? Sun dried tomato, where do they come from? <laughs> I enjoyed that one more than <laughs> Describe it to you without just saying the words glowworm and cave, aren't you? But like in different orders. It's a cave, there's worms in it, you're not going to believe what they're doing. <laughs> there's some negative reviews of the glowworm cave. Uh, there's a one star review of the glowworm cave. And oh, I'll show you what it is. So basically, you can't take pictures in the cave, but they take a picture of you as you come in and superimpose it into the cave like this. Um, nothing wrong with that image, is there? Where am I stood? Where I should be stood? In the water! <laughs> There's a pointless boat behind me. I've got a big boat there and I've just gone, no, I think I'll wade through myself. <laughs> There's a little girl who cries throughout the whole thing. <laughs> well, well, I think there was, when you were there. It's not part of the global experience. <laughs> my, my, my criticism of it is that you only get about like two minutes in, in the glow worm bit. The rest of it is about a 50 minute tour of a regular cave, just padding it out with all sorts of mystical techniques, like saying the phrase, fun fact, before telling you something shit <laughs> to make you think it was fun. Stuff like, fun fact, this is some of the most porous rock in the country. Like, oh. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about that. <laughs> they, um, they made a sing. Made a sing to prove that there's no echo in the cave. They made a sing, twinkle, twinkle, little star, in its entirety. <laughs> like that, it sprung on us. We had an hour bus journey. Tell us that when we got on the bus, we'd have rehearsed it. We'd have how many's going on. No, twinkle, twinkle, twinkle. This is how quickly you can prove there's no echo in a cave. There's no echo in this cave. Whoo! There we go, next bit of the cave. Take care. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. In this entire in unison, just slowly. Trying to get everyone in. It's like in primary school. Do you you did this? So in primary school, our head teacher, Mr. Colton, would come out and he would say, good morning. And then we would say, Good morning, Mr. Colton. Good morning, everybody. I'm the creepiest star to the fucking world. Only one man didn't think that was weird. I'll give you a clue, his first name's Mr. <laughs> Mr. Colton, about two years before the end, but I knew her teacher, Mrs. Williamson. She comes in, she says, Good morning. We do that back at her. The look of horror in her eyes was palpable. Her first assembly was her trying to teach us how to say good morning in a naturalistic way for about half an hour. Just her going, right, you, you, you get rid of the hand, everybody. Let's just do good morning, good morning. Keep it nice and bright. Good morning. Good morning. Right, so yeah, nice and bright. That means quick. Do it quicker. Right, let's do it again. I'll come out. I'll be like, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> of human happiness, but at that speed. So she go, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> that'll do, that'll do. Uh, ne next thing we learned about the kids was the, um, see, uh, stack, stack, them, stack them the lights, stack them lights? Stalactites. Stalactites. Is that right? Yeah. 
Right, okay, well, this is, I, I, you know, I thought, 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 I thought,
that's not good. Like, I, I remember reading that Leonardo DiCaprio has a vitamin C infused shower. I don't even know what that was, now I'm desperate for a bit. I think he's just got, like, a juicer above his head. Or something like that. <laughs> but the best alternative I've come up with, you can do this when you go, run yourself a bath, chuck a barocca in it. <laughs> Full tub of barocca is like a little jacuzzi for a bit, but. <laughs> not the same, though, it's not the same. Did some research into indecisiveness. Uh, apparently, we're indecisive because we come from Neanderthals. I read an article. The Neanderthals had very few choices to make when they were around. Modern, modern day times, we've got choices at us all the time. We're not dealt to, to deal with those kind of things coming up. I, I don't think I agree with this article because it included the, uh, the line Neanderthals had two key choices to make. They could either kill something and eat it or have sex with it. <laughs> yeah, they must have had. More than that. Yeah. Even just like a third one of leave it. <laughs> just like, leave it. If you tell me a Neanderthal's like gone onto a tree, he tried to get a fork, he's trying to eat it, like, oh, that's too hard. So there's only one thing left to do. Oh, this tree. <laughs> Apparently, I read another article that all women like pink. Because we come from Neanderthals, and it's sort of a, and you might be one in the audience thinking, I don't like pink. This was written in The Guardian, so I think you do. <laughs> <laughs> Guardian? You're not going to lie, put some pink on, stop lying to yourself. <laughs> yeah, I did some more research in, into Oregon. It was on the British Origami Society's Twitter account. I uh, found this guy, Origami Nick, recommended that I follow him. Where's he from? <laughs> <laughs> If, if you don't know where Ghoul is, that's all you <laughs> Nine out of ten! Not bad! <laughs> I love that. Better than weather where they just rank the towns at the end. <laughs> Chesterfield's off the fucking charts! They <laughs> <laughs> haven't even named that shit all the top three. It's an embarrassment. He <laughs> <laughs> told me about it. So Origami's gone through a bit of a boom. It's an origami boom, that's probably why I'm selling out this gig. You know, the fucking origami boom. Because <laughs> this started off, it's about mindfulness. People do origami, helps them relax. Uh, this started off with adult colouring books. Uh, and by adult, I mean uh, people of a certain age, not filth. <laughs> <laughs> Just like pencil drawings of dicks for everyone to colour in, page after page. Um, you know, people of a, you know, sensible stuff. Um, I, don't, I don't agree with. So, colouring in helps you deep stress. I, I think if colouring helps you be less stressed about something, the thing you were stressed about was never important. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no one's on like a plane going down, everyone's like screaming, and one person going, oh, well, we all do at some point, don't we? <laughs> I knew something was wrong when that pilot came with a vagina out. <laughs> Nick, um, origami, Nick's got a bit of a dark side as well. He also introduced me to the world of sex origami. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was just like a cook, just like, oh, what? <laughs> this, is, yeah, this is some of the stuff he sent me. A um, couple of pigs fucking, fair enough. Um, the pizza! <laughs> My favourite bit about this is they both, they both got quiffs. <laughs> It's missing something. Give them a quick. But it's burn, that kind of stuff. That's your classic. Um, and uh, Donald Trump on the top. <laughs> I reckon that's all the Russians have gotten in. They've just seen that for <laughs> But now, we're nearly at the end of the gig, and you know what that means. There's going to be a live wish granted! <laughs> What's already on the slide, but you know. <laughs> um, so, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to make um, the thousand crane. So, I pre folded some of the crane bases. It takes too long to do a crane. If I did a tutorial video, it would take ages. Um, but what I can do is I can show you like a picture by picture as I do this, and if anyone wants the instructions, I can send them to you. <laughs> <laughs> When I'm doing alright, I can't click it and do what? Press click. <laughs> and again! <laughs> Absolute mistake. Right, so, this isn't going to be perfect. Um, yeah, then. <laughs> <laughs>
Ireland. What? How was it? Yeah. How was it? September to the 9th of October. My fiance was like, you're not going to make 999 before the gig. There's no way you can do that. I was like, yes, I will. She's like, no way. It's too much pressure. Did I fall under the pressure? No. I fall <laughs> under the pressure. <laughs> How many wish we won? Um, right, so. <coughs> this is my wish. What do you think? I mean, I'm not saying the word click to you, mate. What do you think is a cue? Me pointing at the screen, giving it a fucking nigger. <coughs> this is like the climax of the show. This is less slick than going into a fucking toilet. <laughs> right, cut point, do it. This is my wish! Back, that's backwards! <laughs> I wish you'd learn the fucking techno- Oh, shit. Let me have a little break. 
bread outside. <laughs> And I don't wish I was less indecisive. I don't think indecision's a thing. I think it's self-doubt. That's my problem. I don't believe in myself.